What's up everybody, how you doing? Welcome back to another Epi Quack Tuts. Today I have yet another insane bass for you guys, made in serum, and it's gonna sound just like this. <laughs> Very sick sound. I know I've heard this exact sound before, I just can't pinpoint it where, but I'll have to do some research before I post this video, but let's just kind of jump right into it here. It's made in serum, and there's some post-processing, but I'll get to that later. So here it is right here. I mean, it is kind of complex. There's some weird modulations going on here, but definitely stick with it because there's going to be some cool tips in this video. And this is one of those sounds that you can tweak to create pretty much an infinite amount of sound. So oscillator A, it is basic shapes on their analog. Bring the octave up one. And we're gonna be using the sine wave this time. Usually when I do FM, I like to use the square wave. I just I just found that it's much more crunchy. I don't know, I just thought that the sine wave worked better for this particular sound. It just sound a little bit better. A little bit smoother, I guess you could say. So you're gonna bring the unison up too. As you can hear, this is a pretty wide sound. Uh so like I said, unison's at two, and the detune is right in the middle. 0.25%. Blend at 75, 76, and the random's all the way down for this one. Our warp type, like I said, is FM from B. And you're gonna bring that parameter to about 43%. And then the level for that's gonna be all the way down because we're gonna be modulating the level. Oscillator B, our FM source, is gonna be acid wavetable. BS2 right there on their analog again. And that's also gonna be brought up one octave. So you can definitely experiment with these octave levels. You can bring it down to zero. <laughs> You can definitely hear how it switches up the sound. I thought it just sounded much more balanced and overall it just sounded the best with both of the octaves up one for both oscillators. But definitely experiment with that. You can get some pretty sick results. So, um, the unison is at two, again, and the detune this time is all the way up. I mean, because why not? It sounded good. This sound is really trippy. Uh, when it's all the way at zero, <laughs> extremely boring and extremely shit sounding to be honest with you so so by bringing this detune up completely just made the sound super messy but in a really i don't know good way <laughs> just sounds so much better with this detune all the way up so as you can hear we're getting some ringing some tail shit going on i don't know what that's from um i had the compressor on and it was much worse so i had to turn that off i don't know what that's coming from i have been having some problems with screen flow Lately, that's what I use to make these tutorials to record everything. There was a new update, 7.3, I got it, and now it's complete garbage. There's huge latency issues, so if there is some audio problems, I do apologize. I'm probably going to be switching to a different software because ScreenFlow, the new version 7, has been complete garbage. So, at least in my experience. So, and the random for that's going to be all the way up. Now our wavetable position is at 74. I just thought that was that sweet spot, it just sounded best at that area. Our warp type is going to be sync one half window. I definitely like to combine the sync warp type with the FM from B. It just always seems to work pretty damn well. You can see that's all the way up right now. So if I were to bring that to zero. It just really seems to brighten the sound a lot and really bring it to life. So, uh, and it really enhances the overall timbre of the sound. So that's why I went to sync one half window. And like I said, that's all the way up. And the level for this is all the way down. So that brings us to our sub oscillator, which is just there to give a bit of thump to that initial um, hit, you know, the transient of the sound. You can definitely hear some thump in that, you know, when the sound first hits. That's coming from the sub oscillator. So uh, it's just a sine wave, octave is down minus one, and the level's all the way down, because again, like everything else, that's gonna be modulated. So noise oscillator, AC hum number one, under organics, right there. Add some fuzziness, bring up that, fill out the sound a bit. Uh, levels all the way down, everything else, just the default settings. Alright, so let's get to our filter now. So we got, we're using a Combs filter. I'll turn it off so you can hear it with and without it. So that's without it and then with it, of course. Just sounds so much better, very crunchy. Just sounds a lot better with this Combs filter. A um, lot more interesting as well. I'll kind of sweep through this cutoff area so you can get an idea of what the Combs filter is doing. So right now it's at 170 hertz. So like I said, I'll just kind of move around here. So, I mean, you can see, you can, you can hear what that does. Um, definitely this area was sounding the best, 170 hertz. So we're going to boost the resonance a lot, 64% to really bring up the effect of this filter. Uh, drive boosted a bit of it as well, 33%. And mix, we got it at 100%. So let's jump into LFO 1 right now before we get to our FX. Just looks like this. I just kind of, you know, started with the usual triangle shape, and I just messed with it until it sounded right. So all you do is just... Bring up these edges like this so it curves and looks like that. 
its own trigger, so it's going to start at the beginning each time. And I actually turned it off BPM mode, so it's not sunk to the actual BPM of the song. It's just kind of whatever the hell you want it to be. You'll also get a smoother transition between LFO speeds. That's one thing I noticed when having BPM mode turned off. Let's kind of, so let's just bring LFO 1 where it needs to go. So first place, uh, like I said, we're modulating the levels of, of pretty much everything here. First bring it to the level of the sub oscillator, bring it up to 64%. Noise oscillator, same thing, level, bring it up to 44%. Then we're going to bring it to the FM from B of uh, oscillator A, which is our warp. So you're going to bring that up 26. So then, of course, we're going to bring it to the level, oscillator A, bring it all the way up. Then you're going to bring it to the warp type of oscillator B, which is the sync one half. And you're going to bring it down minus 50. Also, bring it to the cutoff of oh, your filter over here, the combs filter, bring it up 62. And definitely tweak these to taste to make this sound your own. Have fun with it. Um, but let's jump into the FX section. Here. Not too much going on here. Pretty simple, all pretty straightforward. Uh, hyper dimension, that's to give it some width, give it a bit of detune, and it creates a nice hollow timbre to the sound that I love. Bring the mix to 50%. The D expander, I just leave it at zero. I'm not worried about that. Distortion, like I've mentioned in a lot of my other tutorials, diode one and diode two are usually my favorite because they're super gritty very heavy but they don't always work for every sound this sound just the usual nice warm tube distortion sounded the best uh the mix is at 44 percent drive is at 36 percent and that's also going to be modulated by lfo1 so bring lfo1 to your drive here and just bring it up 58 we have our eq so what i'm going to do now is turn off the eq and this filter and listen to the sound all right now i'm going to turn it back on you can hear the vowels in the sound so much better. They're very clear, very in your face, very obvious. And that's just by doubling down on the certain EQ modulation that we have going. So right now, what you see, as you can see, we have a high pass with a little notch. And this high pass has a little, has a peak, which is accomplished by raising the Q, which is giving it some resonance and um, accentuating the vowels. These two shapes are just merging into each other. And depending on how you set them, depending on how you set the modulation, they're going to create different kinds of valves. So on the left-hand side, like I said, it's a high pass. The frequency is going to be at 70 hertz. So that's modulated by LFO1. So bring LFO1 to that bitch and bring it up 35. You're going to bring the Q up 60%. Again, that's going to be raising that peak right there. And uh, the gain doesn't matter. So on the right-hand side, it's just a notch. So uh, the frequency is at 8,891 hertz. The Q is uh, pretty much right in the middle, 48%, not too wide. And the gain is interesting because uh, I have a macro actually routed to the gain. So as you can see right now, it's set at 6.1 dB, but I have macro 1 here routed to that gain. So go ahead, bring macro 1 to the gain and bring it all the way down. What that's going to do is turn it from a peak to a notch pretty much. It's going to be raising and lowering the gain. So I now have this macro 1 at 29%. So if I were to bring it all the way up... <laughs> You can hear that vowel changes a bit, um, and that's all it is. So all you're doing is raising and lowering the gain. You can see how that peak went all the way down. That's all just from macro one. So then our filter is a high pass notch number 12 filter, which is exactly what this EQ is. It's the, it's the exact same thing. It's a high pass with a notch, and that's all it is. So we're just mimicking, we're just stacking these two effects to really bring out those vowels even more. Cutoff is going to be at 75 hertz. Resonance uh, boosted to 66%. Drive, bring it up a bit, 26%. Then the frequency, that's going to be of the notch. You're going to bring that to 77%. Mix is at 68%, and uh, you can tweak that to taste. So I actually have LFO3 here routed to the cutoff of the frequency instead of LFO1. But, I mean, it's pretty much the same shape. And you're probably saying, all right, well, if you look, they're both the exact same shape, and they're both at the same rate. So, quack, why the hell did you do that? Well, let me tell you why. So first thing, just bring it to where it needs to go. So LFO3, bring it to the cutoff, bring it up. 43, bring it to the frequency and bring it down, minus 22. Then go to this macro right here. Macro number 3, you can make it macro number 4, whatever the hell you, whatever the hell you want to do. Macro 3 here is routed to the rate of LFO1 and LFO2, but it's not routed to the rate of LFO3. So when you do bring up the rate of LFO1 using this macro, listen to the different sounds you can get. It just gives you a very unique uh, modulation. They're not all following the exact same speed. It just makes it sound more interesting. I don't know. It's just something I like to do. It just sounded pretty sick. So definitely do that. I recommend that. And have fun with this uh, LFO speed macro. That brings us to our compressor, which I, for some reason, can't use because it's creating this horrible artifact echoing shit noise. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know why, but it's doing that. Never did it before. So, I mean, use it if you want. If not, I don't blame you. Okay, LFO2. What the hell is going on with LFO2? So, LFO2 is modulating the master tune of Serum. So, before we get into this shape and all that shit, go to the matrix. And we're going to set up the modulation here. Because it's just, it's just easier. So, as you can see, under source, I have it as LFO2. And that's and the destination is the master tune. So, go to global. Master. Alright, so first thing you want to do is make the type go unipolar, so this arrow is just going to the right. So the pitch modulation is just going to be going up instead of up and then negative and, you know, self-explanatory there. And then you're going to bring the amount to um, 48%. That's the exact same thing as, you know, bringing up this blue line and whatnot. We're just bringing that blue line to 48 and that just was that sweet spot. And then we have an aux source for that modulation, which is macro too. So we can use macro 2 to bring that modulation in and out however we want. We can pretty much turn that uh, modulation on and off with this macro. So right now the macro is at 29%. So if I were to bring it all the way down, you're just getting one constant pitch, which is, you know, the sound still sounds cool, but uh, experiment with these, with this shape. The down the link's in the description, so you don't actually have to make this. I don't expect you guys to do that. But yeah, experiment with these, uh, with this shape here, and get some really unique, pretty sick sounds. Rate is at two bars, and macro three, which was modulating the rate of LFO1, it's also modulating the rate of LFO2 here. So bring that to the rate, bring it up 23, and then the exact same thing for LFO1, bring it up. So that's going to be it for serum and then like I say we do have some post processing So first thing is camel crusher for some more just uh, for some more distortion just the tube warmth preset volume in the mix all the way up That's all it is. You can use whatever distortion you want OTT I did use that uh, the depth is at 68% the output gain is going to be at 4.9 dB and you're going to boost the high end a bit to about 2 o'clock, give or take. What's cool here is serum FX. So now serum FX is doing something very very cool Something I've been doing more often because I've been running out of filters in the actual serum. But, you know, you got serum FX and you got the same filters. You just do it through there. So let me turn off serum FX and check out the sound. Now with serum FX on. It's much more crunchy. And that's being achieved by this ring mod filter. But first thing is the distortion. So I ended up using diode 2. I couldn't resist. So diode 2, bring the drive up. 32% and the mix is at 30%. So we're not using it too much. We're just, you know, giving it a bit more distortion. Then we got our filter. Like I said, it's the ring mod filter. Under miscellaneous, how you doing? Right there. All right, then. Right now, the mix is at 37%. I'm going to bring that all the way up to 100 and mess with this cutoff. You're getting a super sick tremolo effect, which if you lay off of it a bit and speed it up, you get a nice crunchy timbre to the sound that I absolutely love and that I use way too much. So that was at 42 hertz for this cutoff here. And the mix is at 37%. So we're not getting that tremolo effect. We're just getting a bit of crunch. Uh, drives all the way down. Resonance is at 19%. Then we got our compressor. Multi-bin. Mix 100%. Bring the gain up. 13.6 dB. And that's all you got to do there. So that's going to be it. Thanks for watching this epic quack touch. Gonna try to get another one out this week. Gonna try to get to some of your requests as well. But uh, in the meantime, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next one.